Hello again. Okay, so the last time we had a look at uh, some introduction to waves. We looked at longitudinal waves as well as transverse waves and uh, the difference between them. Uh, we also had a look at some Java applets just demonstrating this. Let's quickly have another look at some of these applets and uh, just remind ourselves on what we saw. Okay, so this is uh, one of the examples of the um, Java applets we looked at and this one was demonstrating the longitudinal wave. Now what you notice here is that that we're going to consider to be a particle and it's exerting a force in the same direction or in the opposite direction as the force, uh, sorry, as the wave is traveling. So we see this wave seems to be traveling up and this is pushing down and then it's pushing up and as it's pushing up the next one is pushing on it and then pushing back so there's this force being exerted or this tension between the particles in the same direction or in the opposite direction as the motion of the wave or the transference of energy now this is what we call a longitudinal wave when that happens now we could also draw a displacement versus time graph and here you notice that if it starts there it goes up Start, goes back to where it started and goes down again forming this graph that as time goes by it is at a different point relative to where it started and at some point it's back where it starts then it's far away from where it starts and far um, away to the bottom from where it starts now all of this, this graph that you're noticing here is the displacement versus time graph and you can see it's actually very nicely illustrated as time goes by I'm at a different point. Now what you should also notice is that there is a maximum displacement and a, a minimum displacement which is also kind of like a maximum just in opposite direction and there's points where it's back to where it started and this forms what almost looked like a wave. Just keep in mind that this is the displacement versus time but everything is still represented in here. For example we have the wavelength Okay, so let's talk a little bit about wavelength. Okay, so I'm going to freeze it when it when the red one reaches the crest. Okay, so more or less, you can see the red particle is now at the maximum uh, part of the energy transference. And what you notice now is that on the graph and where it is now, it is back where it started. Okay, it's it's at its uh, starting position if I may say that okay and this is now where our graph starts now let's trace it from where it's at this crest until it comes to the next crest I hope I'm going to be able to pause that in time okay so let's go until it reaches the next crest there we go more or less and there you notice that this distance here or actually this timing from where it was on the crest of the wave here until it got to the crest of the next wave is represented by this portion of the graph and this distance here is called the wavelength okay actually this is called the wavelength and the timing of that wavelength is the same as the timing from where it starts to where it ends but a wavelength is therefore represented to where this part of the graph start until it gets back to repeat this cycle. Now if we were to measure how many of these waves will pass by, okay let's go take it, okay there it's one wave passed by, here another wave passes and now we're on the third one. If we were to time it and see how many waves pass by per second or per minute or per hour, that is called the frequency. The frequency is how many waves pass by a certain point. So you notice that the representation of waves are not stagnant. It's not a graph like just this, we call this a sinoid graph. It's not like the sinoid graph that stands still. It's actually a graph in motion. Okay, so it moves and as it moves, it time is passing by. Okay, so the, m the amount of these full cycles passing by a certain point in the graph is called the frequency. Let's have a look at another one of these but this time we look at a transverse wave. Okay, so here you see a transverse wave. Notice this time the particle is moving up and down, up and down. 
but the tension that each particle has on its um, neighbor particle is now vertical it's uh, sorry uh, horizontal it's not vertical anymore okay so that it's in the the tension is in the same direction as the wave is propagating or moving or energy is transferring but the motion is up and down okay in the parallel direction that's when we call it a transverse wave sorry I said parallel I meant perpendicular okay so this time again you notice that if this is the starting position we have that it displaces up and it displaces down but everything still works exactly the same it still makes this sinoid graph if we were to and you can't do it on this um, applet but if we were to draw the displacement over time we would have gotten exactly the same thing and the same thing would apply the maximum displacement it has from where it start is called the amplitude so the height that it reaches is the amplitude and we can for example increase the amplitude and you see now it's going higher okay that's the maximum displacement the wavelength is the amount of uh, or the distance that the there are between when this one is at the crest and when it's at the crest again so you'll notice if I increase the wavelength okay now there is a bigger distance between the crests of these waves okay if I decrease it you can see the waves follow shorter on each other and you'll also notice here that when I increase wavelength frequency decreases okay notice that increase in wavelength decreases frequency and frequency is the amount of waves that pass by a certain point and that obviously makes sense because the longer something is the fewer of them will pass by okay um, I, I hope it makes sense you make sense sense to me but that is assuming something that is assuming that this wave the speed of this wave the velocity of this wave stays constant isn't it completely possible that this velocity may increase of course it will and the when this velocity increases obviously more waves will pass by a certain point okay so let's look at that relationship quickly so we have that first of all that there's an inverse relationship between wavelength that's lambda is wavelength and frequency that's f is frequency okay in other words we notice that when the when lambda increases when wavelength increases the frequency decreases because now fewer uh, it's a longer wave so fewer of them pass by a certain point and the opposite we also saw is, was true when if a wavelength decreases so when the waves become shorter more of them can pass by a certain point um, because they go through quicker they shorter okay but okay um, um, that is not really true they're not really quicker okay they're just shorter they just this, this it takes less time now that's the other thing is the period of a wave okay the period is how long it takes how long it takes for one wave one wave to pass a point okay in other words the period in this other graph made a lot of sense let's go to that one in this one the period is the timing from here to there okay so from where we start to where we start again that time it takes that is called the period and there's a relationship between the period because period is how many waves per uh, or how, m how many seconds per wave while frequency is how many waves per second okay period is how many how long in other words seconds per wave 
And what do you notice? Aha! Uh -huh. Period is represented, by the way, with a capital T. And I hope you notice this, that your maths is up to scratch, that the frequency is the inverse of the period. Okay? In other words, it's the um, reciprocal. When we swap the numerator and the denominator around, we get the other one. Okay. And so if period is talking about timing, and the next thing that, that, that we are actually considering is velocity of the wave. The velocity of the wave is how fast um, is this wave moving? The velocity of the wave. Then what is the formula for velocity? Velocity is simply displacement over time. Okay, now we're not talking about displacement, or actually we are. Okay, the distance between two waves is a, a distance. That's a displacement. So this would be, in, in wave language, we would talk about lambda is the distance between two waves and how many of them go by in a certain time. Okay, that's the period. Now we're not working with time, we are working with frequency. We would like to work with frequency which is 1 over time. So that our formula is actually lambda divided by 1 over the frequency and again hopefully your math is up to scratch and what this means is we multiply with tip and times we multiply with f over 1 to eventually get the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency and this is very important and is very useful and we're going to use this a lot so make sure you get where that came from and I know I did that quick but uh, I'm taking too long to explain all of this but let's just summarize this with a little sketch we've seen now that a wave can be represented by a traveling what we call a sinoid graph okay so traveling sinoid graph it'd be a graph that moves so it's this it's this graph but it's in motion it is actually moving in that direction so let's give it some some what looks like motion okay does that work for you okay good this is moving okay now the distance from where this wave starts, goes up, comes back, and where the next one starts. This distance is called the wavelength. And we use a lambda to as a symbol for it. Sorry. Okay. The other thing that we saw is that the the maximum displacement, and, and this by the way is displacement over time, the maximum displacement, the highest point that that the particle is displaced that height from where it starts to where it goes and in the opposite direction that's obviously the same these are the same lengths that maximum is called the amplitude the amplitude and okay amplitude simply represented by a it's very seldom used for our purposes okay but the amplitude is the maximum displacement okay we also looked at the frequency okay so if I were to stand here and count one two three the number of the frequency is the number okay number of waves per time unit okay and then the next thing was if if I were to measure this distance okay in terms of time in other words how long does it take for this point to get to that point okay how long does it take for this point to get to that point that is called the period okay so don't get confused with period and wavelength. Period is how long it takes to get from here to there and wavelength is how long is that distance, okay? So period is how many seconds 
or actually time per wave and that is this is called or this has a relationship to frequency it's equal to 1 over frequency so I hope I represented everything nice on this graph more or less and this is the representation that we would have of a wave on paper okay even though we can't show motion on the paper but we can at least write down the velocity of the wave somewhere and that's something I didn't mention in the end the velocity at which this thing is um, propagating on our page that velocity is given by the wavelength times the frequency or the wavelength divided by the period okay important Cool. See you in the next video. Hopefully we're doing some examples there.